Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 42 of my POA podcast, Black Hand and Beyond. Thank you for joining us. I'm sure there will be a lot more people joining us soon. And remember, when you're watching this, you can watch all of these uh, Facebook Live episodes, uh, POA, my POA podcast, Black Hand and Beyond. Anytime on Facebook, you just have to be a member of the POA History Group. So we started this last year, and we did uh, 30 episodes last year, and now we've, we're going to try to do about 20 or so this year. We'll see what the rest of the year brings. I apologize for my sunburned face. It was, uh, believe it or not, 101 degrees in Oklahoma yesterday and today. I think it reached that. That's what they were predicting. I sold a few cars the last couple days, so I was out there. Uh, walking around in the sun so I guess I'm tanned up uh, like I was on vacation but I'm just in uh, Enid Oklahoma so we're coming live to you tonight from Studio J at the dealership here Jackson's Auto Family Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram we also sell Chrysler Buick and uh, or Chrysler Chevy Buick and GMC in Kingfisher Oklahoma just down the road so if you need any vehicles, the Jacksons family's really supported POAs here. They've never been to a POA event, but because I've worked here for almost 10 years and they know my passion for this great breed and club, uh, they've donated this facility for me to use. It's a pretty cool studio in here. I've had a few live guests and hopefully more uh, in the future. Uh, we're gonna have some video guests in the future. I just haven't did it uh, yet where somebody will be uh, on the screen and you'll get to see them besides just me. Tonight we do have a cool guest, uh, Trisha Nelson, who grew up with the Lalonde family uh, from Texas. And then Iowa is going to be our uh, call-in guest tonight. I'll be calling her in a little while. First, we're going to talk about the topic tonight, which is Cayuga's POAs and the Lalonde family uh, from Texas. And then they moved to Iowa. And that's going to be one of the main topics of uh, the episode tonight about them moving and why they moved and uh, what they did in Iowa. So, of course, George and Pat Lalonde, or Lalonde, I say Lalonde, and I guess you pronounce it Lalonde. I got to meet uh, through the phone uh, Jesse and then Tricia. I've talked to them uh, both uh, on the phone. Uh, I think it was Sunday night. And because the Vikings played last night, unfortunately, they didn't look very good. I, guess, I wish I would have been talking to some POA people last night. But uh, this is a pretty cool subject, uh, the Cayugas POAs. The Cayugas uh, breeding program has 58 and a half wins, Congress wins. Again, half is mayor in full. One of the mayors was a Cayugas mayor, but it wasn't bred by them, so they got half credit for the full. But that's a lot of wins. Even today, they haven't raised the POA since about 1980, so 40 two years and they're still in the top 30 I believe last time I updated the list they were I think 22nd and they're still probably in the top 30 so uh, Terry's joined on hi Terry uh, you're in Iowa there so you don't have to travel too far good luck this week good luck to everybody that's going to the select sire and I guess the breeders challenge for charity is still there and then of course the international for charities uh, in Illinois so I wish I could be there but it's hard to uh, get away so uh, I'm sure some more people, Jan's watching now. I don't know if uh, our main person that always watches, Tracy, will be able to watch. She said the Wi-Fi is not very good. And uh, you're welcome, Terry. In uh, Illinois, I know it's out in a cornfield. Last time I was at Gordyville anyway. It's out in the middle of nowhere, but still a cool facility. So again, good luck. Uh, to everybody there. I did have 90 pictures queued up tonight, but the gremlins of this technology and stuff, about 47 pictures came through, so I apologize for that. There's going to be some holes in the picture story, but hopefully I can keep it going with my memory and the notebook with my notes here. Uh, I'm going to talk about the breeding program of uh, the Lalonde family for a little while, and then I'm going to bring on uh, Tricia, and she's going to talk about more of the family aspect of it and uh, the members of her family and where they, you know, showed. And the 70s and POAs was kind of the golden era of, of uh, POA. You know how they say the 50s was the golden era of Hollywood? Well, the 70s, nothing against now or when I was really active in the 2000s. I grew up in the 80s. That was a great decade. But in the 70s, uh, George Lalonde was the executive secretary for 10 years, and uh, it just seemed like the POAs took a tremendous leap forward from 1969 to 1980. The decade of the 70s moved the POA forward so much, and uh, they were still at 54 inches that whole decade, but the writing was on the wall that it was gonna go 
to 56, uh, 14 hands. And this family was one of those families that put a lot of Appaloosa. They also liked a little bit of Arabian uh, blood. Later on, they raised some Arabians, I believe, or had some. But uh, they just raised some great POAs, if any of them with the Cayugas prefix. Uh, that's from them. So they hardship some and they bred quite a few. And we're going to talk about a few of the famous stallions that was conceived on their place that they didn't breed, but mare owners came and brought mares to their stallions. Two of the most famous stallions in the POA uh, breed were conceived on uh, the Lalonde farm in Iowa. So let's get started here. This is a picture of them, of course, a family picture. Uh, back then, you know, they used to have family pleasure. It was pretty cool in some of the 70 uh, international shows. There's some cool pictures of different families. And uh, I think there's probably more people than there is horses in this picture. We'll see some more shots of this as we go on, too. So uh, here's now George alone and his family and Pat. They're a blended family. They brought their kids together, and then they had a child together, which is Todd, their youngest. Uh, but they were living in... Uh, Texas, raising POAs. He was an electrical uh, engineer, and uh, he had a business, I believe, while well, he was offered the chance to move up by Clear Lake or Mason City and uh, take over when Leslie Boomhauer, Les Boomhauer, retired as the executive secretary. Of course, he was the founder of the POA breed, and uh, he resigned or retired from the POAs in 1969. Well, here was this big mass void the person that founded it and ran it for almost 12 years was now gone moving on to different things what do we do for a new leader well they found that leader with george alone and he uh, moved his family from texas all the way to iowa and a bunch of horses at one time i know they had trisha told me they had around 60 head i'm not sure how many they had when they moved uh, but they ha had many stallions like Tomahawk's Buffalo Trail. We'll see a picture of him. Peacock, that's some of the stallions they had uh, down in Texas. So when they moved to Iowa and he took over as executive secretary, like I say, he kept things moving. There was some controversy uh, while he was in there, not with him, but, you know, with height and stuff because the breed kept pushing forward. One of the stallions they used in Iowa that – had a major impact on the breed. He doesn't get a lot of credit, but Joker's High Tiger uh, was an Appaloosa stallion. Uh, George wrote that he was the shortest son of Joker B that existed, and uh, he, that could be. They said he was 14 hands even back then. Uh, you know, they, I don't know if they were pushing him with a stick or not, but he did look short, and we'll see some pictures of him, uh, and you'll recognize some of the famous POAs that he sired. And uh, he was an own son of Joker B being used in the POAs in the early 70s. So uh, not only did George help run the club and his wife, Pat, I think worked on the magazine and different things in the office, they continued to raise quality POAs. And then their family also, um, of course, showed pretty extensively and went to all the national shows. So here is Tomahawk's Buffalo Trail. He was a son of uh, Tomahawk's Big River, who's an own son of Stuart's Danny Boy. And then the daughter of this stallion was also a daughter of, or the dam of this stallion, I mean, was also a daughter of Stuart's Danny Boy. So he was a double grandson of the legendary Danny Boy. And this is one of his foals in the picture here. I'm not sure which one that is, but this picture would have been taken in the 60s. Here's one of the early Cayugas, Cayugas Black Hawk. That's a Tom Hawk's Buffalo Trail son. Okay, so uh, as a breeder, you know, there's been some breeders that have dominated the international show over the years in the Congress, and, you know, one show really sticks out in your mind or something. Well, that show for the Lalone family was 1971. As you see there, it was in Kansas, Hutchison, Kansas, to be exact. And it was the 13th international show as it started in 57. So uh, anyway, or actually 59 was the first, uh, first show. 57 was the first sale. So this is a picture here of Cayuga's Frosty Patches and her daughter, Cayuga's Cricket. And they won Marin Full at that show. And then Frosty Patches won the Small Mares at that show. She went on to become a great, I think Todd wrote her. I know some of the uh, Lalonde kids wrote her. Here she is with Alan Lewis. She became the first Supreme Champion in the state of Minnesota. 
Kyoga's Frosty Patches did, and she was a good producer, too. They actually, Lewis has bred her a few times. They bred her to Tough Plot It, and uh, she was bred to Gold Prince. And anyway, we'll talk about her some more, too. But here's Kyoga's Red Wing at that same show was your grand champion mare in 1971. She was the international show grand champion mare. Of course, the international show is now the National Congress. Same show, usually around the same date, just a different title. And here is Joker's High Tiger that we talked about, the short son of Joker B. He had that Joker B look. Of course, the Joker Bs had great minds and became so famous. Carl Miles, before he had Prince plot it, made Joker B a household name. And this was, as George Lowen said, was his shortest son. And uh, you can tell he's short just in this picture, short cannons and stuff. He did have kind of the old app marking on the nose, the roan mark and the varnish marks, and he did have a sparse tail, and most of, a lot of his foals had that, as you'll see. But they were gamers, and they were performance horses, and they looked nice, too. This, this horse had a pretty nice head. This picture really doesn't do it justice, but you can tell he has a little smaller head than the normal Appaloosa from the late 60s, early 70s. Uh, some of the pictures that are missing is his daughter, Cayuga's Rainbow. Cayuga's Rainbow was sold at the international sale by the Lalone family, and she went to Dr. James Black in Indiana, who raised some really nice POAs. He's the breeder of Pants Tough Date and Tough Pants, and uh, he also had quite a few different. He had Smoky Pants. Well, he bought Cayuga's Rainbow, and when Ken Steele, Ken and Pat Steele from Alabama, some of the best breeders of all time, bought quite a few mares from uh, James Black, and one of them was Koga's Rainbow. And they took her and bred her to J.W. White Lighting and got KS's Dina's Real Miracle, or KS's Bandita Breeze, I'm sorry, KS's Bandita Breeze, and uh, she's the mother to this great mare on the picture here. But I had four pictures of uh, Grayson with uh, her with uh, Bandita Breeze, and it didn't come through, so I apologize. But uh, that mare was a great show mare, and of course her uh, show career got cut short. She was able to have one foal before she passed away, and that is TX's Dina's Real Miracle, who's shown here with, uh, I believe, Jackie Chernega. And this was uh, when she was younger. She won grand champion uh, at the international show in 2004. So this mare right here is an own granddaughter of Cayuga's Rainbow. She'd be a great granddaughter of Joker's High Tiger. So here's one of the legendary stallions that wasn't bred by the Cayugas by Lalone, but uh, there's Joker's High Tiger again up in the top. You can see his sparse tail. He is the sire of Paper Tiger. And then of course Chinook's Flaxy is a supreme champion mare. She was the mother, uh, but he would have been conceived in Iowa on the Lalone uh, farm. And he's the first one. You might be trying to think who the next one was. We'll get to that a little later if you're watching. Here is a nice colored photo of Cayuga's Cricket, who won the international Philly class in 1971. Again, that was just they won so many classes that year. Uh, Cayuga's Grasshopper actually won, I think, the two-year-olds. Back then, there was a two, two divisions and two-year-olds for height. There was like 49 and under or something like that, and then over 49 to whatever the height was, something like that. I'd have to look it up again. But uh, she was owned by the Bateman family at the time, Ken Bateman, and Steve Pick Bateman was in the picture as a young kid, uh, and unfortunately that picture didn't come through. And then I had a picture of him. He did quite a bit with Grasshopper. She showed all over the country with several different families, became a supreme champion. Uh, but this is cricket here. And again, she's a high tiger out of Frosty Patches. Here's Cricket when she was in Minnesota with uh, Becky Rupplinger. There she is again. Of course, Becky's niece, Sammy Searle, now Sammy Browns, is getting to be a well-known trainer. She's a legacy member. She, her grandma was in POAs. Her mom and aunt were in POAs showing. And her aunt, mom's Amy, of course, and now Sammy's doing a good job in Iowa, uh, raising a young family and showing POAs. So here's her aunt, uh, Becky, with Cayuga's Cricket. Jan said she never saw a baby photo of Cricket. Jan Rogers is one of the family. Jan and Dean had Cricket down in Iowa for a while. So here's another Joker's High Tiger that uh, showed 
pretty well. This is Cayuga's Whisper. I believe she was th third or fourth as a yearling at that 71 uh, national show when the Lalones did so well with their stuff. And uh, you see, again, they like the Danny Boy bloodline, Driftwoods. Chispa was an own daughter of Danny Boy, and they used her with uh, Tiger with pretty good success, several uh, foals that became famous. And here is Cayuga's Tiger Imp, and I believe they, the Lalone family showed her quite a while, I believe, different uh, members of the family. We'll talk to Tricia later about that, if I remember. Uh, there again, you see Joker's High Tiger, and then a series Spot Cash daughter on the bottom of Totem's Spot Mini. We did a show, an uh, episode about the Totem's program from Michigan. So, unfortunately, High Tiger passed away, and uh, his stuff was just starting to get famous. Paper Tiger was pretty famous, but not as a sire yet when his uh, sire, Joker's High Tiger, passed away really young in the 70s. And uh, I think he would have made a way bigger mark. Uh, yes, the tails weren't the best on his, but the minds were great and the confirmation was there and they were just doers. Like Cricket, a lot of people have mentioned about how well Cricket would jump. And uh, they'd teach people to jump on Cricket and everything. Uh, two of the cool things that George did, I think, with this program is when he went out to the 1970 International Show in California, I think it was Pomona or somewhere, uh, in California, first time POAs ever went to the to California for the international show. He uh, I, he ended up getting a stallion named Siri Rex, and I don't know how much he used Siri Rex, but he brought that influence from Arizona and California. I believe uh, I think Dean Kenny had him out there in uh, California, and he was the 1970 Grand Champion stallion. By the way. Uh, High Views Quovatis was reserve grand. Howard Victor's loud colored young stallion and Siri Rex was grand. Well, they put the international show back in California, this time in Ventura in 1977. The only two years the international show was out west in California, and that was 70 and 77. And George seen another Siri stallion, that legendary longtime POA breeder Paula Cooper, Paula Cooper Corson had brought some POAs. Siri Bobby Lee ended up winning her class, and she brought a stallion that no one had heard of. He was five years old at the time, and he'd never sired a foal, I believe, not a registered foal. And she ha hauled him all the way from uh, Wilcox, Arizona, to Ventura, California, which isn't that far, but it's still a long hike, and uh, showed her POAs. And this is Siri's Silver Prince. And uh, George, being the executive secretary, you know, talked to her, as the story goes, talked to uh, Paula and asked her if she, how important she was, told her and how important she was and stuff in POAs and asked her if she'd attend the sale because she hadn't attended many sales. She was the, if you're not, if you don't know who Paula Cooper is, she registered the second POA ever. When, uh, how, when Les Boomhauer asked for people from Western Horsemen, he put an ad and people answered the ads for ponies, spotted colored uh, ponies. Paula Cooper was one of the first ones to send in a picture and a veterinary certificate, and that was Siri Chief. So that's how she gained fame, and then she bred a lot of great series. Her blood line spread through. Uh, we could, we've had episodes about Siri. My second episode on this podcast was about Paula Cooper and the Siri line. So anyway, George convinced her to consign some horses to the 77 POA sale, and it was probably in Marshalltown. It might have been in Des Moines already, but it would have been in Iowa in 77. And this uh, fairly unknown stallion who took fourth in his large, tough class back then, there was probably 10 stallions in there, a lot of them really good. Uh, she consigned him to the sale, and George ended up buying him. I don't know if he felt responsible because he got her to bring him, but uh, I think he brought 12 or 12.50, and that move would change history again. And it was running towards the end of... Lalonde's breeding career by the end of the 70s. Uh, they were starting to wind down a little bit. His career as the executive secretary ended at the end of 79. So uh, the POA uh, 
website has him as the executive secretary for nine years, but actually he was the executive secretary for 10 years. Cause it's, and they say the years in there, they just didn't do the math right. It's 1970 to 1979. Well, you count the zero and that's 10 years. So he was the second longest executive secretary uh, of all time behind, of course, the first one, Les Boomhauer, who was around 12 or 13 years, he held the title. So this is the picture after the sale. This was taken right after the 77 International Sale. If you've never seen Sirius Silver Prince in person, he had a beautiful, unique head for a POA. Uh, he definitely had the, some Arabian uh, influence. Uh, he was a gray horse. He'd turned gray, and uh, he did have the graying gene. But a lot of people came and bred to him at Lalone's. And uh, another story that goes that I wrote in Spots Included, my uh, Legendary Stallions book, this horse is a chapter in there, that uh, they paid for him before they left Iowa, or before they left the sale ground with... Uh, stud fees they had they already had him paid for so but i do know it changed history a lot of people bred to series silver prince uh the following year in 1978 one of those people was uh, uh howard slagle and or harold slagle i'm sorry harold slagle and hive avatar was the result of that and i do not have a picture of hive avatar in here uh, i did but it didn't make the cut come through of course he became a legendary sire himself. So that's the second famous stallion that was conceived on the Lalone place. It was Paper Tiger and Hive Avatar, if you're paying attention to trivia. So maybe somebody can uh, run around with those facts this week at the International Futurity. Uh, so here's Cayuga's, Cayuga's Tiger Cat, and she's one of the series Silver Prince foals. She was 1979, and uh, I like the name down there, Cayuga's shush is her mother and of course we'd mentioned driftwood's chispa earlier how she was a danny boy daughter uh i'm not sure where this filly went and if, if anybody knows she sold pretty good in 79 uh, she was second place to her more famous three-quarter sister who we're going to see a picture of in a minute and uh anyway i just I, the mother's name again is koga's shush and then there was koga's hush hush so they were full sisters hush hush and shush well when hush hush was bred the series silver prince out come this tiny filly who only sold for five hundred dollars in 1979 uh, her stable mate sold for more and this is Cayuga's bambi and of all the great poas the lalones had owned and bred uh, for the Cayugas anyway this is i believe their sole hall of famer right here is Cayuga's bambi this is i believe the only Cayuga is in the hall of fame uh, so she's a series Silver Prince daughter, of course, and she ended up uh, with the Kozer family. I be, believe the Leslie's bought her uh, from the sale in Wisconsin, and then she went to uh, the Kozer family. Here she is. She placed that she won the Midwest for charity, or Midwest, there wasn't a Midwest for charity then, I apologize, the Midwest show. Uh, before the international show. And then at the international for charity, there she is with Pat, and she placed in the top four. At that and again she was tiny she didn't grow up to be very big uh, here she is with Mark Kozer and Corey Kozer and this mare would go on to be one of the most famous Cayugas she probably surpassed Cayugas Frosty Patches who was a famous small mare one of the greatest small mares of all time and this mare would be right up there probably even more like I say she's a Hall of Famer she won so many uh, national classes uh, somebody said turned in just in, tuned in just in time, so I can't tell who that is. Uh, quite a few of you, I just see Facebook users, so I apologize. Some people are logged in with eCam, so I can see your name or face on there. But if you're not, I just but I thank you for commenting. Keep commenting if you want to say your name. It's Corey. There you go. So yeah, you did just turn in, tune in in time. You've seen yourself. So and I believe I'm glad you tuned in because I believe this is your little daughter here with Cayuga's Bambi. I hope I got that right. And uh, you can tell us when this was taken and your daughter's name, if you would, Corey. But uh, of course, uh, Corey and Troy both rode uh, this great little mare. Troy won a bunch of eight and under boy classes. That's back when it was eight and under girls and eight and under boys. And then of course she went to Oklahoma and Cody Porter won a bunch of classes on this mare as well. She was on the cover of the magazine, really famous. Uh, but she did end up back with 
uh, Corey and the Kozer family up in Wisconsin. So I'm glad you tuned in, Corey. And you can, I'm sure you're typing away, writing some comments. So I'm going to move on. So the last POA that the Lones bred uh, didn't carry the Koga's prefix, but she was named Katie Koga. And I'm not sure who named her. Uh, okay, we're going back to that's McKenna. She was four in that picture. She's 23 now. Uh, she lives until she lived until 20. Okay, Bambi lived until 29. So that's good to know. Thank you, Corey, for that information. So Hall of Famer Koga's Bambi lived to 29. And I'll go back to that picture. That is McKenna at four with Koga's Bambi. And that's McKenna's mother, Corey, and McKenna's grandpa, Mark Kozer. So pretty cool history there. That's what I love about POAs. So getting back to Katie Koga, she was a series Silver Prince daughter. Uh, Harold Slagle promoted her, won the international in Colorado as a yearling. This is a picture of her as a yearling. She's a little out of balance, but she did win that tough class that day in Estes Park. Uh, like I said, series Silver Prince and Cayuga's Cricket, who we've mentioned throughout the show, was her mother. And she became the last, I believe, the last registered POA bred by uh, the Lalones. So that's some history right there. And she went on to show. I know she was in the top ten. I think she won some, quite a few titles. I think she was shown by uh, Courtney Craver, I believe. If she's on here, she can uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I know her first name's Courtney. So I think from the south. But that's Katie Koga. So I threw this picture in here just to show you the influence when people buy horses and move horses around. So kind of a cool story. Uh, and Trisha, I'm going to get ready to call you pretty quick if you're watching live. Hopefully you are. You might not be. She's in Colorado. And uh, I don't know how well the Wi-Fi is and stuff out there. But, of course, this is Dean Dammon and uh, Ama Silverado when he was a yearling and went reserve grand. And then, of course, he became a famous gilding and stuff. But he's a son of Sirius Silver Prince, and George Lalone talked Paula Cooper into consigning Sirius Silver Prince to the international sale. And then he ended up trading uh, Sirius Silver Prince to Wally Cates from Minnesota. The Cates and the Lalones were good friends. They'd uh, traded horses before and had connections with different horses. Uh, Kokomo was owned by the Cates family and then later by uh, the Lalone family. And uh, I had a picture of him too, but I don't have that on here. And then Siri Silver Prince ended up in, like I say, with Cates's for a while. And then Dean Dammon had been using Hive Avatar uh, breeding to him. And then he ended up trading uh, one of his colts for Siri Silver Prince. And that's how some something like this happened. So just cool connections there all through the POAs. So here's another family picture. We're going to get into the family portion now of uh, of this story. And I'm going to give Trisha a call. Hopefully I can get her on here. So whoever's watching tonight live, let me know if you can hear the phone well. Todd rode Kokomo in 79. Okay, that's good to know. Kokomo was fast, I believe. He started out in Texas as a stallion, I think, and then was gilded. And Cates has showed him in games. Linda Cates. If she doesn't answer, we'll call her other number. Hello? Hi, this is Trisha. Okay, there's Trisha. She's not answering, so let's try her other phone number. That's the beauty of live, live broadcasts. This is a different number here, and she might be home. If not, we can Hello? go... Hello, is this Trisha? Yes, it is. Hey, how you doing? This is Kent. You're live with about oh, 20 wow. viewers or so watching. So. <laughs> yeah, 
twenties of viewers. Yeah, a lot Great. of the twenty twenty viewers, twenty viewers or so. But there will be hundreds of people watch this eventually. A hundred and some, probably five hundred <laughs> views. Yeah. So uh, anyway, your last your name is Trisha Nelson now, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. And you grew up with the Lone family. Kind of tell the story there. If I don't know if you've been watching it live or not, but I've been getting into the talking about the breeding end of it. And I kind of left the family portion of it till uh, you came on the line. So I covered different oh, okay. stallions and, you know, some of the I haven't mentioned everybody yet, but talked about Joker's High Tiger and Series Silver Prince covered that pretty well. The big 71 international show. I talked about that. So now I have a picture on here from 71, a family, the family pleasure picture. So were you in the Is ring? The one with us lined up? I was looking at it. I just didn't find the podcast. I'm not very good at that. Stuff, but, um. <laughs> That's all right. You're kind of in that age, you know, where I'm getting that way where uh, get, <laughs> I, I said on here I had 90 pictures, and I apologize because you sent me some beautiful pictures, and I got some of them on here, including this one we're looking at right now. It's in color. Uh, mm -hmm. All you guys are in white uh, shirts with yeah, blue ties. Yeah, horses. Yeah. And my brother Doug, and then I think it's me and Jesse and Dad's George. Dad is behind her, and Mom. I right. have to go back to it. And um, but Hardy, Hardy's not there. He's the other one that right. started the horse with the horse. I think Todd's on the end because he looks like the youngest. Yeah. He's the closest he, to the would be the judge or to the camera. And then. Mm -hmm. uh, your mom, Pat, mm -hmm. and then looking down is probably uh, Doug, I guess. I think it's, or maybe I have it's, to find the picture, but I think it's Jesse with It Dad might be Jesse. Her. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. And then, well, you're in the middle then. You're, because there's four, there's five people and four horses. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and then Doug, because Hardy was really tall and he wasn't able to ride a POA for very long. Okay. Um, All right. But. So yeah, there, there was good. six of you guys in the family. You guys were a blended family, right? And uh, right, yeah. Okay, and then and Todd, sister, go ahead. Yeah, my oldest sister Georgia was the one that got us into horses, but she's the one that I, I'm not sure she can saddle a horse. <laughs> but she's responsible but, for all this. A lot of history right, passed. Yeah. A lot of history yeah, because of her. I should have. Yeah, she she should be in the Hall of Fame. No, oh, and she never yeah. even saddled a horse. Yeah, that's funny. Oh, well, maybe she did. She but, might uh, have. Yeah. She was older than the rest of us. Right. But yeah, I have that picture. Todd's in front of my mom, and then Dad's behind Jesse, and then that's me, and then there's Doug. Okay. And that was probably right about when we moved. Right after we moved to Iowa, right. maybe seventh grade. I mean, 70, 71, because Hardy graduated in 71. Right. Well, I the one know. I'm looking at here, the one in color, that was at the Kansas uh, International, and that would have been in 71. So. Okay. Yeah. And then there's a couple in black and white, too. I don't know if it was the same ones. It might have been different horses. Now, I'm putting you on the spot here, but could you name these horses? I was thinking, well, I, I know <laughs> my brother, Doug, that's Patches. And then I would be on Cowboy, and Jesse and Dad are on Bonnie Blue. Okay. And I'm not sure that that might be Pocahontas, but she looked bigger than she was. Okay. She, uh, she wasn't as big as it looks, but that's because she's closer to the camera, maybe. All the legs are dark. It's funny, from the knee down, all, every one of those, all four of them have dark legs from mm -hmm. the knee down. So that's funny. Yeah. Now these pictures are going to be in random orders and I don't know who all these are. I just don't have, you know, I work a full-time job, unfortunately. I wish I could do this uh, full-time, uh, but that's just a hobby. So I'm going to be going through pictures here, but just kind of, you know, I don't, are you, you weren't able to get on and watch it right now? Can you coach me a little bit? <laughs> well, I can. Here's what, it's one of the brothers uh, doing polls. He's doing polls on kind of a roan. I, I think it's that, a brother. Right? I, yeah, you sent that. Yeah. I, I think that was when we were still in Texas. That is most likely Hardy. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And that looks like an early day POA. He's kind of yeah. steering him around the pole. Probably there. it could have been Buffalo. Okay. Or it, or um, maybe. Um, now there's an Oklahoma be. State show with uh, this is Frosty Patches, really young. She looks pretty yeah. young, I think, and. Uh, it's one of the boys on her holding the trophy. That's Doug. That's Doug, okay. And it might be before, that doesn't look like Patches. He rode a horse called Pixie. 
Oh, it might have been Pixie. Okay. Oh. All right. It could be. She's wrong. She might be a little heavier than Patches a little bit. Yeah, and yeah. I don't see the rat tail. Okay. The, the confirmation. Patches was a little prettier in the neck and head. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then here's a brood mare. I didn't crop this picture. Her foals just outside the picture, but uh, that's fine. We don't have to identify all these, but... Uh, and this is a Windridge stallion here. I think you guys had, or you might have gilded him, but the the one with the black spots on the back of his, kind of like black hand, you know, white on right. the head and neck. And that's right after we moved to Iowa. Okay. And we didn't have that many leopards or spottings like that. Right. Um, I don't know if Dad didn't like them or what, but. Um, well, High but Tiger too threw a lot of blankets. You know, a lot of them yeah. round like he did, but. They, he, he threw a lot of blankets. He did a lot for POA. As I was mentioning, I don't even think we talked about this all the way, but two very famous POAs, uh, Paper Tiger and Hive Avatar, were conceived at your guys' place. They weren't bred by your family, but they were conceived there. Somebody brought the mares, you know, to the stallions. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah. they both became legendary stallions, so one in Alabama and one in uh, Iowa. But. Oh, good. I'm just gonna go through some of these pictures. So, when what's your earliest uh, memory in POAs? Uh, when we we left Dallas, my dad was still an I mean George was still an engineer, and we bought a horse called Bowie Cowgirl, <laughs> and I think I was seven, but I was pretty tiny then, and we went up to Tulsa, Oklahoma to a to a horse show and I don't know if you researched Cindy Subtle yeah she was real big and um, I think she was Oklahoma right. she won everything but her grandmother would make um, homemade outfits for her and they were just gorgeous and I my mom bought me a little previously owned Cindy Subtle outfit and it was just <laughs> shimmery and with fringe and and they all and I got first place but they said it was because I ran the judge over. Oh, really? Um, so, <laughs> but that was my first trophy. Okay. But I have other memories of, you know, in Louisville is where we lived, of playing on the walkers. And then we were in 4-H, and um, my my horse, Cowgirl, had a boy with a buffalo who was the horse that my brother Hardy rode. Okay. And... Uh, and he was cowboy, but he was he was the one that I raised from a baby and showed. And he was the one I told you that was 54 inches. Oh, right. Dad wouldn't let me show him. But right. he was a good one, and he was winning a lot, but Dad wouldn't accept anything that didn't go by the rules. Right. Uh, you know, I hadn't mentioned this yet, but I talked about his uh, career as tenure with uh, as executive secretary and it really was 10 years that he put in and uh, I should have had this on here but I think it was on the back of the rule book for many years but try hard win with dignity and if you must or win something win with grace or something like that do you remember that he came up with that and if you must protest with dignity and uh, nowadays they took that out but in the 70s and the 80s it went through the 90s it was still on the inside cover on the back cover of the rule book and he's the one that came up with that saying because uh, he was that way you know he had a lot of integrity and if he had to make a ruling or have somebody make a ruling like you said and your sister told me that too they didn't want uh he didn't want you guys showing horses that were too big so or ponies right yeah he went by the rule book that's for sure <laughs> right in many ways yeah right here's a picture fort worth stock fort worth fat stock show that's and uh, George Art took the picture, it looks like. so. That's, that's my brother, Hardy. That's your brother, Hardy. Okay. Yeah. All right. That was in Texas, of course. We were still in Louisville. Right, before you guys moved. So how old were you, Tricia, when you guys moved to, where did you move to, Clear Lake? Or? Yeah. yeah. Um, we were halfway between Mason City and Clear Lake. I, it was the middle of sixth grade. Okay, middle uh, of sixth grade. Like a little bit. At Thanksgiving. Okay, you don't have or, to age yourself. That's fine. You don't. Yeah. Well, that's okay. <laughs> There's another um, Fort Worth uh, stock show on uh, running the that polls. That looks like Doug. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you're seeing it now. Yeah, I'm oh, seeing good. it now. Oh, good. It, it came up. It wasn't coming up before, but. Okay. Um, All right. So. You'll have a little lag 
Um, probably not too much, but. So you that, wrote, go ahead. Yeah, that looks a lot like my cowboy. But I don't know what you have. You seem to know the stuff. That's cow I think that's cowboy, the one with the b big blanket. Yeah, cowboy was a uh, chestnut and blanket. He was really beautiful. Yeah, he looked, you know, like he had the round hip and stuff, more like what they started going after. And mm -hmm. I'd mentioned this to you and uh, Jesse both. Your dad seemed like, or George seemed like he really, the necks and stuff, because they were pony necks, like the old dragon horse. He was famous and got, had books written after him. But if you looked at him confirmation-wise, even when he was in POIs, he had that stubby little fat neck. And, you know, he just, uh, he didn't move like a, a horse. He moved like just different more like a pony of course yeah. he was short and and the breeders like you guys uh started uh stretching the necks yeah. out and stuff and so refining I, it, refining it yeah. a, I, I just remember really appreciating the raven neck and head but the quarter horse hips right you know, which is kind of what i think the goal was there and, and i think kind of that's what he liked to to right he likes series silver prints probably because of that because of that Mm -hmm. nice beautiful head and then siri rex i don't know how much you guys used him but i see yeah. ads that he was that he came to iowa so uh i'm gonna put you on the spot again a little bit here but uh who was the who was more of the horse person pat or george so your mom or or george oh, i have to say the kids <laughs> <laughs> but um no you know mom I guess mom actually rode. I think dad would like drive them, you know. Right. Them to, but we were the ones that trained them. You trained them. When it came to yeah. raising them, like, did you all have inputs? Like, hey, you should breed this guy into this mare. Or was it more just no, no. George? No. Yeah. No, we were we were kids. You were kids. Dad did all that. Stuff, yeah. And probably mom. Okay. Um, but as far as yeah, we we'd latch on to the ones that we liked and. Um, I think Todd and I, I don't know, Todd, Todd, I was, Todd six years, seven years younger than I am. Okay. And, you know, so when we, Jesse and I graduated from high school, he was like seventh, eighth grade. Right. And then that, not long after that, I think when they went to Texas. So I was going to say Todd and I stuck with it the longest, but Todd was doing, you know, the lead line stuff. And right. Two. But right. then when you look at who showed i i showed and through till i was 19 okay um, and hardy you know he, he was older and then doug i don't know doug showed a while but i think todd and i were the ones that really traveled with him the most. that showed the most you went out to california for both internationals then in 70 and 77 mm -hmm. yeah yeah that beautiful picture of you and i think it's Imp, didn't you tell me within the painted canyon or whatever uh yeah that one didn't tiger make imp. the yeah tiger imp that one didn't make the cut not my fault but with the computer i had 90 pictures queued up including a couple cars to advertise where i work here in the studio and those the cars didn't make it and a couple of the pois didn't make it so well about 30 or 40 of them didn't so uh luckily yeah. i did advertise them pretty heavy this week and last week on the history group though so uh yeah. that well, picture that, was a... that trip out to that was in the painted desert and i think nimmers were with us and clarks and uh, a few other family and flagels probably um, uh, but we would play we would hunt through the painted desert and chase and <laughs> it was just so beautiful right and them are memories you still have all these years later so yeah, oh yeah that's cool and then i did call my friend linda cates that i met in between sixth and seventh grade with the poas and she was excited she, oh good um, and she's the one that we i called him prince but um we, wally cates yeah right and, siri silver prince and then kokomo i had a picture of of uh, Linda with Kokomo before you guys got her, and it didn't. That's before he roamed out. He had a blanket and stuff, and mm -hmm. it, yeah, he's look. He was younger. His head's way up in there because he was kind of a gamer, wasn't he, Kokomo? Well, he was. He was in Texas, I believe, and yeah. maybe still a stallion. But he was high strung then. But I think 
you know, it's a matter of how you handle the horse. Right. So when Linda had him, he was a pleasure horse. Oh, was he a pleasure horse? Okay. Yeah, he became one. You know, I was like, I can't believe that's Kokomo. And, <laughs> and by the time Todd got him, Kokomo was as gentle as could be. Oh, was he? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't think I ever seen him in person, but I have some really young pictures. I might send them to you where he's really young, like, and as a stallion in Texas, and then yeah. when he went to Minnesota, and yeah. But unfortunately, that one didn't. I do have uh, quite a few of the ones you sent me made it. Some of the black and white ones, and uh, like I say, we don't have to discuss all of them. But there's a lot of game pictures. Seems like a lot of pole pictures they took back then. So yeah, that was me on cowgirl, so that had to be in Texas. But. Okay. Yeah, my right. black frizzy hair. But she was <laughs> she was blind in one eye, and but she was really fast. Was she? Yeah. Yeah. Here's uh, Cayuga Spider Britches. I put this in here because, of course, it's a oh, Cayuga. Yeah. So Loretta, it was a supreme champion. Speaking of supreme champions, you mentioned uh, Cindy earlier, Cindy Subtle, and she had Cindy's Fury. That was the first supreme champion gilding in the braid. So, yeah, okay. she was a big nick, and she rode him. So, and, of course, he was named after her. So, yeah, that was early time POAs. And he, uh, when they... I don't think they had the Supreme Champion Award right away. So when they did bring it in, he became the, the first one. So, Boy, well, here's an old picture. <laughs> here's a really, oh, that's Todd. That's yeah. Todd. Oh, Todd. <laughs> yeah, he's a little there. So he almost grew up. I mean, he almost was born into POAs. Pretty close. Oh, he was. He was, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, well he was two, I think, when we moved to Louisville and started okay. doing horses. We were in Dallas before In Dallas, then. right. Um, and then went to Louisville and then ended up going to Iowa. And, yes. Uh, yeah. I bragged about George a lot, so I hope people appreciate everything he did. Uh, you know, he helped steady the ship for 10 years and, and keep POAs going. And uh, mm -hmm. now, you know, the board has to do a lot more of that. He had a good board with him, too, throughout the years. Um, okay, this is one with the shoots in the background. I always like those pictures, you know, the bucking shoots. <laughs> And that's Jesse. That's yeah. Jesse. Okay. And I don't know the horse right now. It's not Bonnie Blue, I don't think. And that's not Cricket. Well, it could, could be, be Cricket. Could be Cricket. Yeah. Or it it could be, be. Those spots are, yeah. She looks yeah, different in different tail. pictures. The rat tail. But High Tiger threw a lot of those. So. Uh, yeah. I thought Cricket was a little darker, but it probably is Cricket. Right. In the picture. Here's an old time picture of this was in Texas for sure. This is George with I forget what this is a Cayuga's, I think. Hancock. Is I it don't, something like I'm that? Not, it may have been a relative of Black Hand. Okay. Hand, Hancock comes to my head, but I you know, I was pretty young. I was third grade. <laughs> right, you're third grade. That's asking a lot, yeah. Yeah. So you mentioned Linda Cates. I grew up near the Cates. Of course, Linda and her brother Jeff were graduated long before. I met Jeff uh -huh. once when we went and bred. The first stallion we ever bred to was Sirius Silver Prince, but then he, uh, the mare didn't settle. And then we found uh -huh. out, you know, he did have a green gene and everything, and we went a little different route. We went the double tough route, which came. Nemers had him, of course. Uh, Nebergall uh -huh. and then Nemers. But, uh, yeah, so I... I knew the Cateses, I knew uh, Wally, you know, but that was mm -hmm. interesting that you said you and Linda became lifelong friends and yep, met yep. because of POAs. So, it yeah. is, and yeah. a lot of, I mean, those were the, you know, we loved the horses and we learned to train, but I think I loved it because of the friends I, <laughs> I met and we did stuff with. And like you said, we'd camp out in the barns and travel together and, wreak havoc on the waitresses at the restaurant <laughs> you know it was just we were young and it was fun right yeah well that's the time of your life to do that so um here's a cool picture when they were uh getting out really your mom would have been like the first lady of poa in the 70s you know because her husband was the executive yeah. secretary so and, and i'm sure mom she did was in the office every day she yeah. was managing that magazine as much as dad right I mean, she really was and the magazine back then is is thick you know it was thick compared to like in the 80s it went down a lot and uh, the advertising rates were better and people used to advertise uh show pictures of their house maybe or their ranch and not even a picture of any poa or they'd show family pictures like there's i had one that didn't pop up tonight but 
of four of you, the four youngest probably, and it's your high school pictures, you know, or junior high oh, pictures. Wow. <laughs> yeah, you're probably glad that one didn't pop up. But anyway, yeah. you know, it's George and Pat in the middle, and then the, the four, you and Jesse, and probably Doug and, and Todd, I guess, would be the four. I mean, but anyway, you're in the four corners. And, yeah, they're not POA pictures. They're just regular shots you know <laughs> Not, but and sometimes yeah they just show a picture of a fence and have merry christmas or something but the magazine was so big and and uh lo- almost if you were in poas you advertised you know and especially in december and the christmas issue was always big so yeah and if you were a kid you knew just about everybody in there right yeah it was it was a cool time for sure so and you were you guys were in like I said the heyday in the seventies. It still is, you know, it's still a big thing. It's uh, they don't POAs don't get enough attention. It never did, you know, even in the fifties and sixties and seventies, and even now there's a lot of people try. That's their passion to try to bring more people in. But for a long time, it's basically people. When you aged out, you you moved on. You know now it's different adult show now. But when you were in there, you basically went to college or whatever and you left. You left POAs, but uh, that's, so now there's an adult brand. Yep, there's an adult PO. You can show adults. Yep, adults can show. You can, and uh, absolutely other More, than halter. Other than halter and cart and babies. Yep, and halter you can show. Uh, there's different. There's 19 and over. It started out as a trainer futurity in the 80s, about 87 or so, and now it's expanded to. They're thinking about having games for some adults right now but there's 19 and over western pleasure and, and you can be on an age you can be on a 10 year old poa it used to be a trainer for charity where it had to be a four-year-old and under poa and you couldn't and a kid couldn't ride it too it just had to be the trainer ride it you know and it was a lot of alumni that came back for that i like mm-hmm. and uh but then now it's it's full blown and and they need it to kind of stay alive too i mean i fought against it for a while when i was a director and uh, you know because I it was a using pony for youth and it's a youth breed, but it's just to keep alive right now with the market changes and the horse climate and everything else. And I mean we're not only competing against quarter horse and paint and pinto and everything else. You're competing against soccer and volleyball and you know jazz band and dance camp and there's just so much and it's so competitive to for kids' time and families' time and dollars that. You know, there, there's a lot of people that show interest for the adults showing. So uh, that's wow. what it's, yeah. And it is 14 that's hands. Difference. That's a huge difference, yeah. It's a huge difference. And the national show is still big. And it's a still big show. And it just happened. While you were talking, I was thinking that mo- when I was doing it, most of the kids train their own horses with their family. Right. Towards the end, you know, I think when we were going out to California, there were trainers there. Right. But other than that, it was pretty much you get out there, you you ride your horse, you train your horse. <laughs> <laughs> right. And now the trainers bring the horses, you know, and the kids come separate sometimes. But not all. I mean, they still come together. But trainers are a big part. And the barns, the stables, because a lot of people live in town, and uh, they go take lessons or whatever. And, then they, and a lot of them own their own horse. They just stable them. And there's some big ones in Oklahoma and Illinois had – a couple big places, facilities, and uh, that's helped promote POAs too because they get kids in, they get families in. Families will drive by and see people, see the kids riding out there, and then they check it out. So, but, uh, okay, well, this has been pretty cool. I, I, I need to tell you, I could have told you this off there, but uh, the Cayugas, they've won uh, over 58 national titles so that's something to be proud of wow. so yeah, yeah they're still ranked in the top 30 of all time and just think well that's uh, cool yeah he, would have thought right yeah. after 42 years you know breeding because yeah. they, they didn't breed since about 80 so i believe well, katie Cayuga is the last one that's what harold uh slagle said anyway he wrote that katie Cayuga was the last one bred by george and pat so yeah, and she was yeah, out of right. cricket. She was out of cricket and by series silver prints. So, oh wow! Yeah. yeah. But, 
Yeah, and who and mom and dad would be very proud. <laughs> well, that's good. That's I'm yeah. glad they would be. They look happy in this picture. Your your mom, I never met her in person, but she looked like a very elegant, beautiful lady. And uh, I will say, don't take this the wrong way, but it looks, looks like she aged a lot, you know, while they were in Iowa. So you can tell by the photos, you know. Well, she was out in the barn a lot. Right, yeah. <laughs> right. And, you know, maybe had some stress, too, you know, run, helping run that club. And, uh, I mean, that wasn't the easiest job in the world, I'm sure. So. And uh, barns and cats. And right. And, and then your kids, and, yeah. 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 Yeah, so. Going from Texas to Iowa wasn't the easiest thing. <laughs> right that would have been something just to uproot i had that on there too if you go back and watch this the the uh took took a big pay cut it said big headline takes a big pay cut but doesn't regret it or something so that's when you guys move so yeah i think the first week we moved to iowa it snowed and i went to, i went to school and i looked out the window and i was like oh my gosh it's snowing we get out of school yay <laughs> And all the kids looked at me like, are you crazy? <laughs> right, right. You hadn't seen much snow in Texas mm. now. No. 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 You see yeah. snow now in Colorado, right? Yeah, we'd uh, like to see more. Yeah. Right. I was telling people it was 100 degrees yesterday and today in Enid, Oklahoma. That's northern oh, Oklahoma. Yeah, my face is all red because I was out in the lot most of the day today. And, uh, yeah, I, right before I went to go on... Uh, live, I went to the bathroom and I'm like, wow, my face is, well, it's Halloween <laughs> coming up. I look like a jack-o'-lantern. So, well, Trisha, well, it's been, uh, it's been great that, uh, if you got anything you want to add, uh, go ahead. You got me hooked on your podcast now. Got me hooked. <laughs> well, we're going to do a Ken Wills and, uh, a Lammers and a Lannons where those are coming up. Doc Nemers. I mean, he was a good yeah. friend of mine, Doc, and he, he was, uh, Doc was one of the first people that treated me like a person and not a, a kid. I was probably 10 when I met Doc, and Max mm -hmm. Nebergall introduced him to me. And uh, Dad was somewhere. I don't know where Dad was, but it was at the sale in Des Moines. And mm -hmm. he just looked down at me, and, I, of course, I started rapping pedigrees and telling him about the horses he owned, you know, and he was fascinated by that. And, uh, yeah. and he treated – and ever since – I mean, I – uh, conditioned some horses for him over the years and we ate dinner together many times like every event you know we'd have to go out to eat and he became a good friend of my dad's and uh, i got to know jackie really well because his oldest daughter because she was the mm -hmm. kind of the horse handler with the breeding program in the 80s mm -hmm. for sure in 90s so and i think she's probably watching tonight but yeah you need to keep yeah. tuning in and tell linda to yeah. to tune in and and some of these people, it's, it's reaching out to the alumni. It's kind of cool to get yeah, the alumni fun. back. Yeah, interested it's in really it. really great hearing the stories about Nimmers and Nevergalls and Stones. And Stones, yeah. Slagles, everybody was really, I spent a lot of time in those, time in those homes. Right. Mm -hmm. And you had the, and Kevin and Chris Jewell were in Iowa. And uh, mm -hmm. the Clarks, I believe. and. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Slagles. Uh, Slagles, yeah. A lot of the families had kids that were older, and then they had a younger kid, too, you know, that was mm -hmm. like Slagles did. And, uh, of course, George and Pat did. had Todd, yeah. And my family was, I come along, my brothers were gone. They really never showed in POAs. And, uh, mm -hmm. and then here I come. And, of course, I got more into the breeding end of it, as a lot of people know. I didn't actually ride in POAs. I could have, but I was too scared. Uh, but I showed in halter with the old guys. I liked being out there with the old guys. They made me look good. So, <laughs> so, all right. Well, and I want to thank uh, uh, Jesse too because she got me connected with you, and uh, she sent me because I asked her for pictures, and she's like, "Oh, I don't know if I have pictures." The next thing I know, she's sending me a whole bunch that you found. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I think every when my mom died, everything got sent to me. Oh, that's good. Well, I'm glad you didn't check it, it out. <laughs> right. I just had to, and there was a lot more, but I kind of chose the fun ones. <laughs> well, that's good. That's what I'm trying to do with this, too, is preserve. POA has been around since 1954, and we don't have a museum yet. And uh, that's one of the goals we're trying to do is to create a museum eventually. 
because uh, okay. we need to preserve some of this stuff. And there's been, you know how many kids showed in POAs that just even if they showed for a year or two, and then a lot of them, that was their life even now. They they just talk about the cool times they had. And, and uh, so we need to preserve those memories. And then I'm on the breeding side of it. That's, you know, preserving the bloodlines and the, the cool pictures of the, the ones from the 60s yeah. and stuff. And, well, so. you're doing a great job. <laughs> well, thanks. Well, I'm going to talk a little bit about some more again when uh, towards the end here, but uh, about their breeding program before I sign off. But thanks again for being a guest. I'm glad you were able to uh, connect, and you, you came through great. You were a good guest, Trisha. So, well, thank you. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks a lot. Right. Bye. Bye. -bye. So that was Trisha. Her name's Nelson now. She grew up, uh, she was uh, Pat Lalone's daughter. Of course, we mentioned that before. George and Pat merged their families. Quite a few, well, a few families did that in POAs. And then they had Todd was their youngest son who grew up in POAs, basically. So I want to thank her again. It helps to have guests. I can sit here and say all these facts and stuff and show all these cool black and white pictures and some cool home pictures from people like she sent. A lot of them didn't make it tonight, but the picture of Cricket was cool as a baby because I had the one from the catalog taken from my phone, uh, from the magazine, I mean, when she won. But you got to keep in mind, those pictures are about that big, like a quarter shot, and then I have to enhance it with my phone and uh, try to do that. So when we get a colored picture from a family like this, it just means a lot. Because uh, if you have pictures or you know people, uh, please send them my way. You know, snapshots of them are fine. I don't need originals. Nowadays, the phones are so good uh, that we can, we can do uh, pictures from a phone or whatever, screenshots and things like that. So uh, this was a little short show tonight. I could have did a three-hour podcast about Cayugas. You know, it's a, they had a lot of great POAs. And I want to mention some of like Grasshopper, Cricket, Frosty Patches, Red Wing, uh, Spider Britches, Tiger's Hemp. Uh, Bambi, of course, was the one that became the, the Hall of Famer. And then, uh, of course, Katie Cayuga was the one that ended it all. Rainbow uh, was one of them, too. So... And then there, you know, just the other things involved with POA so much, dedicating their time. Uh, like that article said, George took a pay cut and uprooted the family uh, all the way from Texas to Iowa. But uh, it was great, a great adventure for them. And uh, it's something that the kids will never forget. And uh, we owe a debt to George and Pat for doing that and helping uh, POAs. They help make it what it is today. And, of course, we have a lot of great volunteers nowadays that help run the POA club and they're doing a good job so uh, next week we're going to talk about what's going on right now which is the international futurity the select sire futurity and the breeders challenge futurity in Gordyville, Illinois I think people are probably arriving there right now that's why some people are maybe not watching tonight but we did have uh, some good attendance Terry thank you for uh, commenting a lot that's right the even when I'd get the magazine, if it was thin, I'd just pour through it. You know, the, the thin ones in the 80s, some of them were only 17, 18 pages, and I'd just read every word in there. It probably helped me become a better reader because there wasn't a lot of pictures. But those ones from the 70s and then again in the 90s, they started getting bigger. And now the year-end deal that Tammy does are, are impressive. Uh, Tammy Verzi puts out the year-end magazine, and it's just so cool to get that in the mail and go through and see all those pictures and uh, that's how I learned so much about POAs, that and the sales catalog. So, again, I want to thank Tricia from Colorado tonight. Uh, grew up in Texas and Iowa, showed POAs most of her uh, youth life. So it was, remember, when, when the loans first got in, it, right about that time, it was in the mid-60s, it was 17 and under. And then it went to, and it was 52 inches. Uh, not when they got in, but before that. And then it went to 54 and 18 and under. So, And Trisha was kind of surprised about the adults. You know, some of the, the people that showed in the past, they don't realize some of the rule changes now. And the PO, They know POAs keep progressing, and they look more like horses. But, yeah, adults are riding now, and uh, she rode until she was 19, basically. So, um, all right, next week we'll do the, the review of uh, POA. If you'll do me a favor, if you're attending the – this 
international futurity, please take pictures. Take pictures and send them to me. Thanks, Dean, for watching. Thanks for your uh, comments. Uh, yeah, send pictures to me of babies or what the pl pleasure classes, lunge line, whatever, candid shots, and I'll have them on the air next week, 6.30 p.m. next Tuesday, uh, live from Studio B here in Enid, Oklahoma. So thank you, everybody, for uh, watching tonight. Please enjoy the song. <laughs>